I'm Linda Schaup and I'm a mixed media artist. I actually like to say I'm a mixed media fiber artist because I work on anything from paper, which is a fiber, usually made out of tree pulp, and um, fabric, yarn, fleece, whatever, I like it all. Um, right now, tonight I was teaching a class on mending, and mending is my new a passion. You probably know already, but I'm Linda Schaup. This actually is Fashion Revolution Week, in, um, and Fashion Revolution is uh, a movement that was started, I think, in Europe um, to try to improve the conditions that people are working in in uh, making clothes, and also to encourage people to make better choices about um, having clothes for longevity instead of just buying and buying and buying. It's so important for the world right now that we rethink our strategy in terms of fashion and clothing. Um, clothing is the, fashion is the number two most polluting industry in the world. Um, and it, you know, we need to change that for the good of our planet. So um, there are lots of ways to uh, um, attack that issue. One of them is um, buying better clothing and keeping it longer and keeping it in good repair and not buying as much um, on a whim, but having more thoughtful um, purchases of clothing. And then the other one is mending. Mending, how many people have mended anything in their lives? Great, great. Um, how many people are interested in traditional invisible mending? Invisible mending is what um, our grandmothers did. Um, and it's basically trying to make the, the garment that has a hole or a, a defect not look like it has a hole or a defect. So that could mean sewing on a new button, it could mean fixing a, a, a seam that's broken. It could mean patching something in a way that you don't even notice it. Um, and I love that kind of mending. That's what I grew up on. Um, my mother was an expert uh, at, at hiding mends. And um, I always thought that was wonderful. My most proud mending, invisible mending moment was when I was making a quilt for my daughter and I was asking many people to contribute squares and uh, they had to stitch on it. And one little boy brought his back to me and he said, I'm sorry, my pet rat bit it. And I was like, oh my goodness, how am I gonna fix this? Because I was right down to the wire on the um, fabric. So I took a piece of the fabric and I cut out a rose and I matched it exactly to the right the rat bite and so sewed it in and you cannot find it even if you look for it now. I have to look for his name and then really look very carefully before I can usually find that little rose. But that was my most proud mending moment for invisible mending. Um, I like the challenge of making things invisible um, and uh, so that, you know, they blend in so well you don't even know they're there. I also like the artistic freedom of mending wildly <laughs> and um, that kind of thing. Just to kind of remind you of the different kind of mending um, we can talk about with visible mending. The first one is what they call slow stitching or borrow inspired. And they just, you know, you just slap a piece of fabric on, whatever shape, whatever you like, and then you do straight stitching over the top. And this is the basis for a lot of um, embroidery traditions from around the world. It's what kantha quilts are made out of. It's what sashiko is made out of. And it is also what traditional quilting, especially French quilting, um, is made like this. This is level one patching. French uh, quilting 
uses whole cloth. It's not pieced. It's whole cloth. Okay. And they, they patch, well, they patch, they sew two together so it's long, you know, wide enough. Okay. And then, actually, it's four pieces. Okay. And they sew it down the middle. So down the middle on the other side, put it together with batting in between, and they just stitch. Oh, so okay. They're beautiful. <laughs> They're beautiful, but it's a whole piece, and there's no, no patching, no okay. anything like that. It's just simply running stitch. The second one you see here is an embellished patch where you put something over the hole, and then you add some stitching to it, or you add layers. That's an embellished patch. It's still a patch, but it's embellished. The third kind is hidden mending. So um, if you have some mending that you need to do, but it, you're gonna make it kind of hidden, but it's gonna show a little bit, then you can stitch things over it like you meant to like um, flowers and different things like that. So that's another kind of mending you can do where you, you fix the seam, but then you embroider over the top. Mm -hmm. And the last type I talked about was integration of pack, the patches or the mends to make a design. These are my famous pants, and they're my famous, famous pants because they've been on all my social media. I bought them with the holes, and why did I buy them with the holes, they fit. <laughs> they, they fit really nicely. And they came with this cute little uh, embroidery and these sparkly things. And I like that, so I bought them. Um, after a while, those holes became really obnoxious. So I decided to patch them. And then what I would do is some of them I patched underneath. So I put the patch underneath and then I embroidered over the top. But what I tried to do was extend beyond the level of the, of the patch. So you can see things coming off the side. In this case, I had a hole here, a hole here, a hole here, a hole here, and a hole here. And I made a waterfall. <laughs> and I made a waterfall and then um, did flowers to kind of just make it one whole uh, thing. And this, this leg I'm quite proud of. Um, That's pretty good too. Yeah, this is, this is a cute leg, but that, that leg is, is really my pride and joy because I think I achieved what I was going for, which was the integration. If you look at my cherry blossoms, they're all different kind of sizes. You can say that's charming, but it's really what you get when you sew freehand. <laughs> So there's this kind, okay? So that's the four kinds we were gonna talk about. I do have a philosophy about um, patches and how to integrate them that I have developed. And that is patching something and trying to integrate it into the fabric is like an Olympic sport. <laughs> it's, <laughs> it's like gymnastics the floor routine. You have to hit all four quarters to be in the game, right? So in this one, you can see I started, I patched this. This is a patch on the back side. This is a patch on the front side. And then I started stitching from in here around. And I hit this corner. Then I hit that corner. Then I hit the middle and this corner. So your eye gets brought around. It's a basic art um, technique is to bring your eye around your subject. So if you are painting, you want to start in one corner and kind of bring your eye around. And that's what I've thought about this. So that is probably the most unique thing you'll learn from me tonight um, it, because it's really my own philosophy there. My suggestion for um, starting out would be to start small. Um, starting out with um, what they call uh, the running stitch. Just take a piece of fabric, any piece of fabric, put it over another piece of fabric and just in, uh, take their needle 
up and down and up and down and then make another row like that and that is a patch that will stick um, stick on your jeans or whatever and it's um, a little more simple than other things. Another thing that some people like to do to get into sewing is actually starting embroidery and doing things easier th stitches like the lazy daisy so you can make some cute little um, daisies or flowers on as an embellishment and it's a quick way to have a big impact on your clothing because it just sets your piece apart from somebody else's you know putting a even a small flower on your lapel makes your clothes different from somebody else who bought that. So that's, that's one way I would say is good. If you have a, some worn out t-shirts um, and you cut them into squares that are the same size and you just sew around the edges, you have created the alternative to the paper towel. And You've kept that garment out of the landfill. You've created a substitute for a paper towel. And you've saved, you know, that much resources going elsewhere. So that's a really easy way to just start simple and then be able to use the thing that you have, that you've made. And um, yeah, and you can do all kinds of patterns as well, but a simple around the outside is, is a good way. So that's my new passion, but I have also taught other classes here at the Jacob Edwards Library. Um, last year I taught a class in using historical photos and mixed media, and that was a really fun class. And a couple years ago before that, um, I taught a mixed media class for beginners, so art journaling for beginners. So that's really a lot of fun um, for me. And uh, teaching classes is one of my favorites, you know. Um, I'm, I teach online and I have some other venues that I'm going to be teaching at this spring. So I'm, I'm quite interested in, in, um, in teaching art and the freedom. For me, it's not about the perfection. I'm not about um, striving for per perfection, but more uh, striving for freedom and um, a sense of wholeness. So that's, that's kind of my philosophy. I'm on Instagram at Linda underscore Schaup. My artist account is Linda Schaup Mixed Media, and it's on Facebook. I also have an email mending class at gmail.com if you would like to contact me.